The following story and photos are from Giant Panda King's book, Gotham 1919-1939, by Russell S. Beatty. Available from www.giantpandaking.com. Viewer discretion is advised. But now, now I'm tired. I don't know how much I have left to give this city. The Great War brought forth many monsters in Gotham City. Two-Face was a product of Harvey Dent's downfall and injury. Laszlo Valentine had abandoned his faith and become the pig because of the war. It was theorized that the Joker was a product of horrors and disfigurement on the battlefield. Among this number was a man named Temple Fugit. Temple had enlisted in the war to fight for his country. He wanted to protect the freedom of his fellow Americans. The gruesome sights he encountered changed his perspective very quickly. He saw death, fire, injuries beyond measure. The explosions rocked him to his core as he witnessed his fellow soldiers blasted apart by enemy artillery. The gas attacks brought an even slower and more painful end. Fugit was disillusioned. The freedom he sought for his countrymen seemed distant and unattainable. No philosophy of so-called freedom could be worth this, he thought. Fugit continued fighting in the Great War, but he returned to New York as a very different man. Gone were his illusions of fighting for freedom and his country, and their place was fury, trauma, and bitterness. Fugit saw people satisfied with living dull, dreary lives under the belief that it was because of their freedom. He also saw the corruption of both political parties in America and found it abhorrent. He felt like he was losing his mind in this environment and could take it no longer. Then he discovered something that changed his life. Fugit discovered the writings and followers of Luigi Galliani, an Italian anarchist. Galliani believed that so-called heroism in the face of seeming capitalist oppression was necessary in the modern world. Galliani's idea of heroism, however, involved the construction and detonation of incendiary devices to instill terror. His followers were called Gallianists, and they sought to wreak havoc and terror throughout the country. They had been active as early as 1914. Fugit found his own worldview aligned very closely to these anarchists, and he joined their growing movement as soon as he had the chance. Fugit found himself acclimating to this group very well. He was an intelligent man, and he became one of their hardest working members. He earned the nickname Clock King from his colleagues due to his aptitude for timers on his incendiary devices. Fugit and his colleagues were responsible for numerous explosions and deaths, but none so grievous as the Wall Street bombing. On September 16, 1920, a large explosion rocked Wall Street and New York. It claimed the lives of 30 individuals, with 10 more later dying from extensive injuries. Police were unable to discover those responsible, but suspected the Gallianists. It was believed that Temple Fugit and Professor Ettore Molinari were the key players involved in the terrorist attack. After this horrific event, Fugit left New York and moved to Gotham City. He wanted to distance himself from the attack to avoid the authorities. Upon arriving in Gotham in 1921, Fugit found even more corruption and duplicity in its politicians and figureheads. He saw that organized crime was nearly indistinguishable from the authorities. Fugit started his own sect of the Gallianists here and immediately set to work. He continued using the moniker of Clock King. He thought it had a nice ring to it. He planned to set off explosions in various points in the city, but he devised a new type of incendiary device, one that could fit in a briefcase. He planned to leave these briefcases in various public locations, 
train stations, public parks, and even some government buildings. Fugit was ready to leave his mark on Gotham, but he didn't count on one thing. The recent appearance of the masked vigilante known as the Batman. The first explosion was small. It had no casualties and was located on a city street. Some people were injured and hospitalized, but there were no fatalities. A note was left nearby that read, Yours sincerely, the Clock King. The police set to work, but so did the Batman. The Bat immediately investigated reports of other bombings in the country and found that all threads pointed back to the Galleonists. Another explosion rocked a public park, killing five people. There was debris left behind from the explosion, as well as another note. Using this evidence and the research he had done, the Batman scouted and observed locations likely to be targets. Fugit began to panic when his next explosion never went off. He went to investigate why and inadvertently put the Batman on his trail. When Fugit returned to his headquarters, the Bat was waiting there for him with handcuffs. Fugit's reign of terror had thankfully come to an end before it had really begun. After Fugit's arrest, all of his prior work came to light. The authorities could not definitively tie him to the Wall Street bombing, but they had enough from the bombings in Gotham to put Fugit away. Due to public outcry, coupled with the evidence the authorities possessed, Fugit was sentenced to the electric chair. He'd spent his life working with timers and clockwork mechanisms, but Fugit could now only count down the seconds until the end. The Batman made his argument against this sentencing to Commissioner Gordon, the vigilante thought it was counterproductive to discovering who was behind the Wall Street bombing. In spite of this, they could not convince the prosecution. Fugit had already been provenly responsible for the deaths of five and the injury of countless others. In the end, the Batman's objections didn't matter. Fugit was still executed. While the Clock King was no longer a threat, his work would inspire terror during later events, during the short reign of another villain. The Bat would be hard-pressed to figure out who was behind this. Pulling on this thread would unravel a hidden plot, one that would engulf Gotham in chaos. Until then, the Batman closed his file on the Clock King and set his sights on protecting the city, which had already seen too much strife.